It's around the 1960s and the US believes that their fighters aren't good enough anymore against the Soviets. And that is why they were trying to design a fighter that could be used in the Vietnam War. The Department of Defense was also looking for a jet that could be used on aircraft carriers. This decision gave birth to the F-111. You could say they were disappointed in this plane because the performance was not good enough, especially for the Navy. They got the F-111 and started using it, but they were still looking for something better. The Department of Defense spoke with different companies to create the best fighter they can. A race started between the companies. And in the end, the concept by Grumman won. Grumman is now part of Northrop Grumman, but back in the day, it was just Grumman. One of the main reasons Grumman's design won is because of the wing design and technology, and that allowed it to hit insane speeds. And back then, Pratt & Whitney designed the engine for it, called the TF-30. The fighter you're seeing here had the most advanced radar system for its time, and it could even track Soviet missiles. The system you're seeing is an anti-missile system called the flare. You could say the flare confuses the missile and instead of making contact with the jet, it hits these flares. And you could say this is one of the most important things that this fighter had. And when the design was finished, they named it F-14 Tomcat. Two AIM-54 Phoenix missiles are on this plane, and it has an M61 Vulcan machine gun, the same gun that's used on the F-22. Just imagine for its time what kind of a monster this was. This fighter could go as high as 51,000 feet, and that was done on purpose. It's good to know that 51,000 feet is about 15 and a half kilometers. But why did it go this high? Because the Russian bombers would cruise a little bit lower than this, and they designed the F-14 to cruise above these bombers. The more we talk about this fighter for its time, we can't say enough. This fighter jet has a speed of 2,485 kilometers an hour. The F-14 was ready in the year 1974, a time where the Vietnam War was pretty much done, and this fighter was never used for that war. The first test that this fighter passed was in the Iran-Iraq War. When the US designed the F-14, they decided to not sell it to any other country and keep it for themselves. But Iran and the US had good connections and the USSR was right above them and they were threatening and that caused the US to accept $2 billion for 80 F-14s. The F-14s that were given to Iran basically showed its ability to the world. These F-14s plus the trained pilots really destroyed the Iraqi Air Force.
The Russians had the most modern Russian jets, like the MiG-23 or the Su-22. But when the F-14s were in the air, they would not be found. If you search who's the most successful F-14 pilot on Google, it'll say Jalil Zandi. This Iranian pilot with his F-14 killed 11 Iraqi aircrafts. Jalil was an F-14 pilot for all of the war. Near the end of the world, France gave Saddam the Mirage F-1, but the Mirage was not good enough either, and they couldn't keep up with the Iranian F-14s. The director of national intelligence reports in the Iran-Iraq war just the F-14s alone destroyed 160 Iraqi aircraft. 58 MiG-23s, 33 Mirage F-1s, 23 MiG-21s, 23 Su-20s and 22s, 9 MiG-25s, 5 Tu-22s, 2 MiG-27s, and a few other planes. So the F-14 passed the most important test in the Iran-Iraq war. Saddam's army would say, would lie and say they destroyed 70 Iranian F-14. But Director of National Intelligence says, compared to 160 Iraqi jets, only 16 F-14s were lost in the war. If you know anything about dogfights, is that Destroying 11 aircrafts is an insane number, especially by one pilot. And that is why it's impressive that Jalil Zandi is the best pilot for the F-14. Jalil was part of the Iranian Air Force until the year 2001. And even though in the entire Iran and Iraq war, he stayed safe and was able to kill 11 aircrafts, this time in a car crash in Tehran, he and his wife lost their lives. There's a lot of different fighters made all around the world, but no fighter like the F-14 actually got to experience this much combat in such a long war. And that is why the F-14 Tomcat is known as one of the most successful fighter jets. Iran and the US are the only countries that have this fighter. Until the year 2006, the US Navy would use the F-14 on their carriers. But after 2006, they decided to retire it because of maintenance costs. But 24 F-14s are still active in the Iranian Air Force. So what did the US military replace the F-14 with? The F-18 Super Hornet. You might not believe it, but the F-18 is not better than the F-14. It's cheaper, it's slower, but it's a little newer. You could kind of compare the F-18 and the F-14 like this. F-14 is like the F-22, the F-18 is the F-35. If you wanted to buy an F-14 in 1975, you would have to pay $38 million. You might ask why did Iran buy 80 of them for $2 billion? I don't know, maybe they got a discount. Even though the F-18 came into market in 1984, it's like a normal fighter and they still build them to this day and they sell them to other countries. The price is about $30 million each as well. It's good to know that a normal person can buy a fighter jet. In terms of the US law, if a fighter jet has been retired and every weapon has been taken off, you could sell that aircraft. Not to go fight other planes, but to just enjoy it. But we have to say, 
you can't buy an F-14 because only the US and Iran has this plane and since the US doesn't want Iran to have any of the parts of this plane, they won't sell it to anyone. 